All right, time to talk about the... Give me your attention for a moment. I'll be glad to okay. tell you what happened. This is called a neuralizer. It's a gift from some friends from out of town. This red eye here will isolate the electronic impulses in your brains, and more specifically the ones for memory. What in the hell is going on? Excellent question. And the answer you're looking for lies right here. Who are you? I am just a figment of your imagination. Oh, man, that was a great win over the Wizards, am I right? What's up, what's up, Bulls fans? Ricky Widmer here, a little bit later than usual. I know, I apologize. Uh, kind of a lazy Saturday going around. Should have recorded the video early. That is on me, though. I still need to uh, hit my New Year's resolution, you know? Start to uh, be better with these things. Be better with the Bulls' reactions for you guys. So far, the New Year's resolution not off to such a great start, but hey... We are talking today about, uh, I guess it was a game that went on yesterday between the Bucks and the Bulls. Maybe it was a game. Some would say nothing really happened there. Uh, but yeah, the Bulls got shellacked, lost by 30. Like it was, yet again, I don't have my tablet in front of me. Usually I do with the box score and stuff. But like this one, I'm like, fuck, like this game sucked. I think it was like 126 to 96 was the end. It was absolutely horrible. Before we get into everything, though, no doubles. We didn't win. Uh, check out the Discord if you're not in it already. If you want to support us, patreon.com backslash MVP vids. And let's get into this one. This was not really a game. I mean, the things that everyone's been saying is, yes, we turned over the ball too much. Yes, fucking one half of Duncan Connaughton and Pat Connaughton. Um, and Dante DiVincenzo, or as I like to call him, White Dante. Uh, thank you, Balmani, for the nickname. Uh, they torched us. Like, the Bucks played... The, here's the thing. First off, the Bucks did not play a perfect game. They did not play an A-plus game in their minds. Shit, I even forgot. I don't even wear these headphones during these reviews. I just had them on for the, uh, for the intro to try to get that all set up for you guys. But... Yeah, I mean, the Bucks didn't play an A-plus game. They kind of had their struggles. Early on, I thought, hey, you know, if this Bulls team plays well, maybe it's a close game. I knew that it was, like, I walked into this game knowing it was going to be a loss. But I was like, hey, maybe it'll be a close game. Kind of, I think at the end of one, we were down by six. And I'm like, okay, may maybe this one we can kind of keep in check. And I agree with two points that were made on Bulls post game. Uh, one by Will Purdue, one by Kendall Gill. The first one by Will Purdue was this turned into a, hey, game's getting out of hand. I'm just going to get my game from everyone. Where the offense that we have seen being run in the first five, ga five games of the season. Let's see. Hawks, Pacers, Wizards, Wizards. I think I'm missing someone before the Wiz. Oh, Golden State. Duh. Forgot about that one. Yeah. First five games of the year, we've kind of seen an offense, seen some ball movement going around. We stopped seeing that. And that led to more turnovers. That learned, led to sloppy play. But the second point is the one I really want to hit with this game. Because, yeah, we shoot more threes. We're in the game. We turn the ball over less. We're in the game. Maybe... We play more of in our offense and not let that get away from us. Yes, maybe it's a better game for us. But the thing I'm starting to think, and like people have said this with the past games, but it really comes down to a game like this, is Kendall Gill told a little mini story where he was like, you know what, coach would come in after a loss by like this, and we're sitting there expecting him to be screaming, ranting, and raving at us. And coach would just come in and go, all right, guys. Hit the buses, let's get out of here. Like, that was code for, like Kendall Gill said, that was code for hit the showers, get on the buses, we're ignoring this game. It never fucking happened. Um, and yes, that's what the Bulls have to do, but I don't want to get into that part. I want to get into, they talked about the team, and it got me thinking to where it's like, yes, you have to forget a loss like this, but when the game gets away from you, and it's like, Where's our offense? We're not doing what we're supposed to. It kind of begged me, and I'm going to ask this question to you guys to answer in the comment section, is does this team have a glue guy? Do we? Ha can you think to yourself right now, think of this Bulls team, think of everybody on it, and maybe it was somebody that wasn't at the game. You know, Hutch, 
T's and P's to Chandler Hutchinson. Tested positive for COVID. Hope everything goes well with Hutch. Uh, like I said, T's and P's. Um, I believe it was Tomas and Ryan went back to Chicago because they were in the then COVID protocol because contact tracing. Um, they're now quarantined. And then I think it was Lowry was out because of that uh, calf contusion. Uh, maybe Lowry's in the quarantine also. Um, that I kind of missed at the beginning of the game when uh, AAAA uh, was talking about it. But I think of this roster and I go, do we have a glue guy? And what I mean by that is somebody who is going to keep the team fresh, keep it to where the emotions don't get like, you don't get down on yourself. Where it's basically somebody to where you're sitting there going, all right, this guy's going to crack a joke. Like, the, the guys I think of is like, when I think of the Cubs, how, you know, you had the the kind of two examples were, number one, the manager, uh, Joe Madden, was a guy where, hey, I'm going to keep it fresh all year. I'm going to keep the guys loose all year. We're not going to kind of be too serious because uh, you got to keep your guys loose. You don't want to get down on yourselves. But also you had like the Jason Hayward that came uh, prevalent in the World Series during that rain delay. I think of like the stories I hear from Pat McAfee in football where it was like he was kind of the goofball, kind of that glue guy to like, hey, guys, it's time to, you know what, forget about it. We got to get it going. And kind of like even during a game, like, dude, what are you doing? Come on, let's get back together. Let's get this going. And I was thinking to myself, do we have that guy? Are guys like Gafford and Kobe White and Wendell Carter, are they too young You've got Zach Levine, obviously, to me, isn't the glue guy, and that's not a bad thing. He, To me, I look at him as the leader of the team. And yet again, you could be looking at this going, well, Ricky, shouldn't the leader of the team be able to do that? But then you think of like Michael Jordan, you think of Kobe Bryant, you think of LeBron James. They also had glue guys as well. Sometimes the top player on your team gets away from the game a little bit, gets let the the emotions kind of take over. And then I look at the veterans, like I think, oh, maybe Garrett Temple's supposed to be that guy. And I'm sitting there, I'm going, well, Garrett Temple's too new to this team. And it's kind of like you don't step in right away and you're like, boom, that's my role. It's kind of something you work into. Patty Will, he's a rookie. He ain't going to be the glue guy. Um, And then the only one left that I can really think of that would be like, hey, is Otto Porter. But Otto Porter to me has never seemed like that guy who's the glue guy. He's just the guy where it's like, hey. I'm going to do, except on the court I'm talking about. I'm going to do my thing on the court. I'm going to do what I do. You get some good play out of me, but he never seemed the guy to keep it loose. Like I said, maybe it's a Ryan Archie Diakono. Maybe it's a Tomas Sadoransky. I know that uh, Stacey King mentioned how not having Sato there kind of affected the second unit, but you kind of look at it and go, hey, you know what? Just because Tomas isn't there doesn't mean the second use, the second unit kind of goes to old uh, Schittsville uh, or Schitt's Creek per se. But like, yeah, it was just something I'm thinking of is, does this team need a glue guy? And then it brought me into another thought is, is one of the problem. I don't even want to call it a problem. I just want to say one of the hurdles that are the Bulls going to face this year. Is it basically going to be that we're kind of building a new culture and nobody wants to bring that up where, We have a new GM, we have a new president of basketball operations set in place, AKME, ACME. They're doing, I would say, a good job to start the year. So we've got a new front office. We got a brand new head coach that is trying to put in place what he wants for this team. And like, I started to think about that after thinking about the glue guy um, conversation. And I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, maybe that's what we need to see from this team. Like, of course, a glue guy isn't just going to pop out of nowhere. Maybe this is something that we have to think of for the offseason. Is there a free agent? I'm not talking big free agent. I'm just talking a free agent, kind of like how we signed Garrett Temple this year. Is there going to be a guy in free agency we can come in and or bring in, I should say, and be that glue guy? Also, is the culture going to build over this year for Billy Donovan? Because... Although there are some non-Bulls fans I've talked to that hate that Bulls fans bring him up all the time. Um, And then there's other Bulls fans that I feel want to, like, because he's no longer with the team, 
want to completely forget all the bad with him and kind of be like, well, th- this is going wrong now, but this is what was good with him. It are we? Is this going to be the year where we have to f- fix? Basically, I want. I'm trying to find the words to kind of use. Is is this the year where we're going to have to really fix and kind of get in the nitty gritty to change everything Boylan put in place? We basically had two years of an instilled culture, Boylan's culture on this team, where we saw it last year. Not a good culture from the outside, where when you've got, and I know Zach said last year he wasn't yelling at Boylan, I still think he was, Um, when you've got these kind of stories that were coming out last year, that just doesn't go away right when that coach is fired. Like, the new coach has to come in, the new coach has to build their culture, so this was a game I was thinking, like, yeah, we got to forget it. Forget that Milwaukee even happened. We're moving on to uh, what, Portland? Or no, Dallas. Dallas is our next game before Portland. Uh, move on to Dallas and just kind of wait and see what happens the rest of this week. Because I'll be honest, this week, I'm not expecting a good week from Bulls basketball uh, record wise um, because we got on Sunday, we have, and I might mix up two of these games. We play the opponents, they might be. Reverse. So correct me if I'm wrong. We play, I want to say Sunday, we play Dallas. Then on Tuesday, we're playing the, I think it's at Portland. Then we're at Sacramento. Then we're at LA to play the Lakers. And then next Sunday, we're at LA to play the Clippers. It's a complete Western road road trip. And it's also tough opponents. Like I know that Portland's been struggling this year. I know that the Kings are really hot. Maybe those two games, we squeak out a win in one of them. But Dallas is going to be tough. Portland's going to be tough. Sacramento is going to be tough. They keep playing the way they're playing right now. And of course, both LA teams. I mean, you got LeBron and Kawhi out there, PG and AD too, where those are going to be tough opponents regardless. And maybe we get lucky and someone rests and we're able to kind of get a W. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised. This team is one and three or zero and four in the next four games to where, This week, Bulls fans, remember this. It's not about the wins and the losses. It's about what we see on the court. And the one thing that, yet again, I'm harping on a lot in this video, is culture, culture, culture. Do we have, will we be able to build a culture this year, kind of erase and fix everything that was instilled by Jim Boyland um, during his era as coach? And, do you think that the question that I asked, do you think that this team needs a glue guy? Or do you think we already have the glue guy on this team? Because there may have been someone I overlooked because um, I can't remember if I named it. Oh, Thad Young too. Maybe Thad Young is the glue guy. I don't know. You guys tell me down below. Um, because I didn't do a vi- Because I didn't do a video on the Wizards game, if I can get that English out of my mouth, I just had two thoughts about that Wizards win. Number one, I want to say his name is uh, Tyler Floyd. I'm sure Tyler is a great guy uh, off the court. Uh, his refing in that game, um, I think he had a little bit of a Napoleon complex, as I said numerous times in our Discord watch along, where there were several times. There was the one where Thomas Bryant kind of was like, come on, man, and kind of flexed his arms uh, in disapproval. There was another time where Russ kind of did one of these, like, whatever. There was another one where Bradley Beal um, went to kind of, I'm going to say talk to, but maybe argue a point uh, with the female referee. Don't remember her name. I'm uh, sorry for that one. Um, All three of those times, boom, big old Mr. Floyd was there uh, to tee him up. I just like, I don't know. That, That game was, I'm not saying that's the reason why we won the game. I'm not saying that's why the Wizards lost, but it's one of those things where it's like, come on, like, can refs not have thin skin? Is that possible? Like, the Russ one is really one that I was upset about because all Russ was doing is jogging back, kind of like, whatever, man. Is a ref really going to be like, oh, you can't do that to me? It wasn't like he touched him or anything, banged into him. He just was like, forget you. Should have ended right there. Should have ended right there. And me being a Bulls fan... I even said when Kobe missed the shot, I'm like, ball don't lie. Ball do not lie. Um, So, like, that was one of my gripes from the Wizards game. The other thing I was going to talk about, and I'll mention quickly here to kind of end this video, is uh, Otto Porter. He played very well against the Wizards. The Bucs 
not so much, but let's be honest, the entire team didn't really play that well. So, I mean, the thought that I have about Otto is if we can get, in my mind, that level of play, a consistently good level of play from Otto Porter, that's a win for us. And the reason why I'm saying that is I am on the side. I know there's some people that are like, oh, do you try to re-sign Otto at the end of the year? I am on the side. You hope for good play. You hope a playoff team like Boston, like one of the L.A. teams, like um, I'm trying to think maybe Dallas or Denver, even though Denver doesn't have the cap space. You want a playoff team who needs three-point shooting and needs a player like Otto Porter to come a-knocking, who can give the Bulls. I'm not even like young talent would be great, but like for me, I'm looking for a first round pick. Get us another first round pick, especially in this draft or even next year's draft, um, 2021 or 2022. Really, though, in 2021, I would love another first round pick um, in this draft to be able to do something with. That's what I want to see from Otto play well enough so that when the trade deadline rolls around by March, late February, early March, we can go ahead and trade your ass uh, to try to get a pick from a team, a pick and just players to make it work. Boston would be one that I look at because they've got cap room. Like they've got the cap room. And I think in that deal, there was a trade exception. I think there's one that could help that one uh, work out. I would have to look into it, but yeah, that's mainly my two points from that game. But Hey, Bucks beat us. We got bucked up and uh, it's time to look forward to the Mavs on Sunday, seven o'clock game. Uh, So let's see if we can, Get a win against Dallas, even though, like I said, this entire week, the next four games, I am not too positive uh, about these games. But let me know what you guys think down below about anything with the Bulls, any questions you may have that you may want me to hit in a Ricky's Bulls reaction. Leave those down below. Also, follow me on Twitter, uh, at Ricky Woodmer. It's super easy. If you want to join our Discord where we're talking about NBA each and every day, Link down below in the description. Uh, if you want to support us, patreon.com backslash MVP vids. I go ahead and do that again. Link down below is how you go ahead and do that. I will be back following the uh, Dallas game tomorrow. Uh, hopefully it's a win. We'll see how it goes. Thank you guys for watching, doing everything you do. And as always, have a good day, everybody.